the deals on our guest today is Lazar Angelo from Bulgaria. Lazar, how are you? I'm good, brother. Uh, it's glad to see you, even though it's online. Yeah, well, hope to see you again back in Kuwait. It's been a long time, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was 2015, the last time I've been in Kuwait. But I'll be glad to visit again. Well, we'll be, we'll be glad to have you here again. Um, how is it back in Bulgaria? Well, it's now nice, but now the winter is coming, so it's a bit, a bit colder. Well, I'm going to pull out some questions, right? But first of all, I want to ask you, um, who is Lazar? Who is Lazar Angelo? How can you describe yourself? <laughs> this is an important question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can go deep with this one, you know, because at every, every stage, uh, I think everyone is different. So the, the person I was, let's say 10 years ago is totally different than the person I am today. So I can say that, um, today Lazar is just a regular person that, uh, lives a good life and that's it. How old are you Lazar? I'm 39. Okay. 39. I'm 13. I'm 39. Also, I'm 39. Also, you're boring and before. 84, January 16, 84. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, I'm uh, September 22nd. Oh, so, so I'm, I'm a bit, a couple months older than you, huh? <laughs> yeah. Are, we are getting close to 40, you know? Yeah, the 40s. I mean, age is just a number. That's what I believe. I mean, it's all about the mental status that you're in, the mindset, and um, how you approach life you know yeah but i i think uh when i was younger i was thinking that let's say when you are like 40 years old life would suck but now i feel a lot better than when i was in my 20s because you know i'm more wiser so i feel a lot better mentally now definitely definitely um when did you start bodybuilding or weightlifting um lazar at what age I started even when I was a kid, I think like eight years old, I started in the basement, just lifting some dumbbells. Eight years old. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't know what I was doing, you know? Right. I remember that even when I was 10 years old, I had apps, so I was shredded, you know, I was doing some martial arts and stuff like that. But, uh, more professionally, I started at 21, I think when I was when I knew what I was doing and I knew nutrition and stuff like that. Right. And can you share with us some of the challenges that you first, that you faced during your journey in weightlifting? Oh, challenges. I think I didn't have any challenges because uh, if you love something, you don't see it as a challenge. Let's say, uh, I think the biggest challenge, if you are going to compete, or if you want to get in top shape is the, is the nutrition and the diet part. Right. But, yeah. but once you have uh, a goal and a purpose and you follow it, you, you don't see it as a challenge. Right. You just, you, you just love it, you know, even though it's stressful and it's mean, is, you know, very exhausting for your body. Mm. But what? you see the changes you, you, you love the process, you know, you, you, so you fo I, I can't say that I had any challenges. Right. So basically it just fell into a passion and just became a lifestyle and you just lived it. You, 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 you breathed it. Yes. Yes. But as we speaking about uh, challenges, I remember like the, the biggest challenges was, um, uh, probably the injuries and not being able to work out. Oh man, tell me about it. <laughs> tell me about it. Be, be, because you, you become addicted at some point. So you can't imagine your life without it. But uh, I, I, I remember clearly one advice that you gave me back in Kuwait when I was, uh, injured and I was really depressed at that time mm -hmm. that, 
So I remember we had a dinner with all the other guys. I think uh, Ulysses was there. I don't remember. Sergi and yeah, the boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, uh, Jakob. Yeah. Yeah. The board. Right. I remember uh, we were walking and I said, you know, with all these injuries, I'm not able to work out. I'm, I can't work out. And you told me there's still a way to work out. You just need to work around around the injuries you, you absolutely oh, absolutely I still have it in my mind <laughs> yeah but it took me like three years to learn how to work around the injuries you know because right let's say you have a injury on your triceps and mm -hmm. you still want to go have your training triceps right right but you you have pain so you need to modify the exercises you need to exclude some exercises um, you need to modify everything according to your current situation. Yeah, yeah it, it took me a lot of time to, to do this. And, and, what, and what kind of injuries did you face? Uh, I have um, um, my cartilage on my uh, joints, on my knee joints is gone. So I had a lot of, uh, um, so I had two surgeries. Yeah. Uh, Cartilage, cartilage replacement, you know, they took uh, right from part and they mm -hmm. put it there. And uh, I had, I was suffering with um, tennis elbow and golfer's elbow. Do you know that? You, oh, yeah, definitely, man. Tell it, you know, I, know. I think everyone, <laughs> everyone that lives it's, has this thing at it, some point. It, uh, it comes with the sport. Yes, but the thing is that I didn't know when I had it, I didn't know what it was. Right. So I continue to work out with it probably for seven or eight months until yeah. it became it became like terrible. I couldn't do anything with it. Yeah. So then I uh, tried to recover it, but maybe for nine months there was still no change, and then I did a surgery on my uh, on my elbows. Oh, uh, the elbows. What kind of surgeries did you have? Uh, they just they, they just uh, remove the scar tissue from the mm. uh, uh, from the bone. Where... Was it like was it like classificated? Yes, you know when you have this uh, tendonitis for so long. Yes. And, uh, the point where the tendon attaches to the bone, mm. uh, it calcifies, and there are there is a lot of scar tissue, so they need to clear it. Oh yeah, they yeah. yeah. To yeah. break it down to break it down. break it down but yes. the thing is that after this surgery my forearms are weaker now yeah i mean i mean i mean i mean you you you, you think your forearms are weaker but um there are strategies where you can actually strengthen and like strengthen them up. I mean, basically to make sure you follow up with your physiotherapist. I'm sure I'm sure you followed up, you followed up with this. I know a lot about this, but the thing is that they I'm pretty sure they like when they are they are clearing uh, the tissue mm -hmm. and they remove uh, some muscle fibers. You know. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why yeah, did yeah. you do so it in Bulgaria? I, yeah, but so when I flex my forearms, they, the the shape is not the same. You know all right so probably the other probably, thing the right thing right 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 i mean i mean i mean look like just just like i said back then and i still say it again uh, injuries comes with the sports you know you just need to work around it and um mentally you need to psychologically um program your mind and and just get into it you know there's no way around it it's just um it comes with the sport sometimes even when you warm up even when you walk you know what i mean uh all sort of injuries happens but um this is this is this is a challenge i probably say lots of athletes face so i mean uh, you're still back in training aren't you yeah yeah i train but i train very uh, different than i was training before i don't uh train like a bodybuilder at the moment right uh, i train um i i do a lot of running i like to do running sometimes i do a bit of boxing yeah. and oh I kind of try to stay athletic more, you know, and more functional. I, I still do bodybuilding like four or five times a week. Right. I love it. I'm the pump. Yeah. And, 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 um, how, what's, what's your training like right now? What's your routine like? My routine program? is the same as it was before. It's like, uh, I do back, uh, the first day, the next 
the day I do chest, then I do um, shoulders, sh- shoulders and traps, mm. and then I go arms and then legs. So and you muscle in the one day. And do you, do you go high reps or low reps or do you vary? Now, now I do high reps. High reps. When you speak high reps, like anywhere between 12 and 15. Yes, yes, because it's better for tendons. But before I was going between five and eight. Five and eight, yes. And, yeah, heavier. No, I don't go I don't go heavy anymore. I'm just trying to put uh, a bit of blood into the muscle. Blood flow. Proper. A blood flow, a blood flow. No, I I can understand. I understand. And uh, nutrition plays a big role in 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 the fitness industry. Um what do you think about that? And what what does your nutrition and uh, program lo- looks like what's your meal plan i mean do you normally like eat clean a year round or do you have like a special dates that you say right i'm gonna for a special photo shoot i'm gonna look like i'm gonna get in shape so i'm gonna put three to four months to get ready for that photo shoot or do you eat clean year round Basically, I follow just simple routine all year round. Like I eat complex carbs and uh, and uh, protein most of the time, most of the meals. Just uh, after 6 p.m., I stop carbs. And uh, in the last meal, I add a little bit of um, fats, healthy fats. And, and that's the, the only diet I follow. And I, I follow this all year round. So I can stay in good shape, in proper shape during all the time. Because, you know, I'm not competing, so I don't follow anything drastic. I don't believe in uh, drastic diets. I think they are very bad for the health. Yeah. So at this point of my life, um, I prioritize health um, before results. And... um. Bizarre, how, like mentally, how do you keep your mindset going um, with training and eating healthy? Well, it's just part of my life, so oh, I just set small goals yeah. so I can so I can stay motivated. Uh, I think this was always the key for me, just to set goals. And to follow them. Once one goal is finished, then I set another goal. It mm. will be a very small goal, but you need to have goals in order to stay motivated. Right. And um, I can see your your supplement brand right behind you over there. Those are Anglo supplement brand. Would you, would you give us a bit of um, a, a brief on them? They look they, they look pretty neat. I, I like the colors, the blue. Yeah. The blue. They, they, they look very neat. Um, I want them to stand out. <laughs> no, yeah, would you? Diet. Yeah, would you? Would you? Would you give us a brief on that? What? 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 What supplements like you guys have, and what flavors you have? We have everything. Like uh, we have whey protein, the pre-workout, the glutamine, creatine, and everything. But we have um, unique formulas for uh, joint complex, also for fat burner. And uh, said the pre-workout and uh, a lot of amino acid variations so we have uh, very unique formulas and uh, what i was trying to do is the give the best product price wise I mean, you know not something very expensive because, right uh, yeah yeah because you know if you are if you are going to a competition these small uh, details uh, in the supplements will make difference but you are just average gym goer even if you take the top notch supplements it won't make difference you know what i'm saying so it's not worth it to to get the most expensive and yeah. yeah. so for me i think the quality should be there yeah. but also it should be well, according to the price so so and um where where are they available currently someone wants to uh purchase them uh we have distributors in about 15 countries right we, we still don't have them in kuwait i would be glad to have them in kuwait 
Yeah, the last yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, mainly in the Middle East, in the right. uh, biggest market, but we still don't have a uh, distributor in Kuwait. I'll, I'll be happy if we find some serious distributor in Kuwait. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Kuwait is a big market. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, uh, I mean, I mean, the design and the quality of um the brand is really standing out. I like the colors of the blue, red, and the mixture of black. Um, regarding pre-workouts, um, what's the formula like? The the one that you have, because a lot of people, lots of people are not into the 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 the, the, the very strong pre-workout where it has the stems like it, and you know what I mean? I like it very strong. So for me, the pre-workout is the most important product. One thing that I wanted to have on the pre-workout is a lot of beta-alanine because mm -hmm. I like spins and needles, you know, Some right. people don't like it, but mm -hmm. me, I like it. You know, I love this. If, if I don't have it, I don't, I don't like the pre-workout. So for me, what I'm doing, the supplements, the main thing is that, that I would use them. You know, mm. so, yeah, because in the in in the past I was doing different kind of businesses, and some of the products I me personally me, I didn't like, so I didn't use. So I never would do this mistake again. So with the supplements, uh, when I'm testing supplements, uh, for me it's very important so that I, that I would use the supplements that I, that I would like it. So I like strong pre workouts with a lot of beta alanine. So. We pull a lot inside. Well, what about test boosters? Do you guys have test boosters? We are just uh, starting. We are just developing one new product. It's going to be a test booster mm -hmm. is, uh, that you like. And it's going to be uh, in powder form. Because, Interesting. You know, like, yeah, because in the Middle East, you know, it's very, uh, with the pills, is hard to import. Right. I, in some, some countries, there's uh, regulations. So it's going to be being powder form and it's going to be flavored. Okay, have you have you thought about the snacks? You know, here in the, in the Middle East, um, they are huge, brother. Look, yeah, I tell yeah, you something. They're, they're, at, at, at the current time, they're all about um, protein bars, protein cakes, protein um, pancakes. You know, you, yeah. have have you thought about going through that industry with the snacks? Yeah. Yes, for sure. But the thing is that the factory that I'm using, um, it's strictly for supplements only. Right. You know, so if I want to do uh, something different like uh, protein bars, I need to go to a separate um, factory that is that, that just does bars. Only. Right. Yeah. But for the future, it's... Uh, I'm going to do it for sure. Look, you are really, if, if you want to really get into the Middle East also, I mean, the supplements will do very, very great in the Middle East, but also currently right now, um, the, the, the hype, the gig, it's all about the food supplements, you know, mm -hmm. just like I said, um, you walk here in the market um, and you see all sort of um, ready to go drinks, protein, uh, protein, uh, chips, you know, all those sort of things. So definitely, you should, you should really think about um, that industry along alongside with your supplements. But the very interesting part that I've heard that you've got you've got you've got a gym in Egypt, La Seven. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations! Can you tell me more about that? Uh, me with my partners uh, based in Egypt. We have uh, we run a company. It's called LA7. LA7. So, yeah, we develop uh, like five or six gyms already. Mm. Yeah, Interesting. Very... How 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 big is it? I've seen. I mean, I mean, it looks it looks huge and it looks very neat. Yes. Some of the gyms are huge. Some of the gyms are uh, a bit smaller. It depends on the project. But we are doing very good now and like our gyms are considered one of the best uh, gym chain in Egypt uh, not not the biggest for sure right the best you know what I'm saying like we are trying to be to to, to bring not something that is uh mainstream yeah for a certain circle of people you know. 
Oh, a certain audience, you mean? Uh, certain guests? Yes, yeah, certain guests, the people that want just really nice experience in the gym. And, and um, like, is it like a, a one floor? Or I think I've seen it like it's a double floor, right? So, uh, yeah, but we have like five gyms already. So, uh, the biggest, our biggest gym, it is on uh, two floors. On the top, we have a uh, outdoor area. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with all all other all kind of facilities, but uh, recently we opened two two new gyms, and at the moment we gone we are working to open the biggest one. Again, amazing, amazing, amazing. Are you guys looking to open outside Egypt or just Egypt currently? Uh, we had we had offer uh, from an investor to open one in Dubai, but uh, oh wow, it, it was during the COVID, so he got scared. And uh, we still, uh, we we also had offer from Saudi, but it's still in progress. Amazing, amazing. And um, uh, Lazar, you're not you're not just a bodybuilder or a fitness elite fitness. You're also an in, an influencer, right? Can you tell me about your journey as an influencer and how did you get inspired and pursued with this career path? You know, when I started, the, this word influencer doesn't even exist. So we would call ourselves fitness models, not fitness influencers. Um, I decided to pursue that kind of career because I, I think I saw Greg Plitt, if you remember him. Mm, I do, yeah. Yeah, um, unfortunately, he passed away in 2015. But Sad. I think he was, yes. Uh, I think he was he was the one that inspired me to chase a career in the fitness industry, because uh, when I saw his videos, it, it look, he looked uh, very su successful to me. Mm. So this said, you know, I have the body, I have the knowledge, so I can chase this. So this just... is going. Amazing, and um, social media platforms are constantly evolving. How do you stay up to date with the latest trends and changes in order to maintain a relevance and engagement with your followers? I don't stay. <laughs> I, I, I don't care anymore about uh, relevance and stuff like this. Right. You know, I'm always almost 40 years old. I don't I don't I don't care that much about social media. To me, it's, it's like bullshit, you know, mm. but I think um i i kind of changed my mindset the recent years right because before that i was uh, i always want to be you know relevant uh to have likes and stuff like that likes subscribers followers whatever no i don't care you know yeah. I, just, I just i just want to bring some message to people and yeah. i could be helpful even to 10 people to me, it's enough, you know, just to be myself. Right. You know, I don't want to be popular for being what people want me to be. I mm -hmm. just want to be who I am. Maybe <laughs> it's going to be to a small amount of people, but I just want to bring my message and help them. That's it. I don't God. care how many people watch my videos or stuff like that. I feel, you know, some, some, some people are very obsessed, you know, they, as soon as they post a video, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard some, um, you know, so some, lots of gigs where, where, where I've been and they, they, they get so obsessed and they get so depressed if they don't have a certain views and it, it, it kind of gives them depression, you know, they keep on following their posts. So, I mean, I was like this, I was like this, uh, really some like this, yeah. And I, once I noticed that when I don't have enough views or likes, it kind of, uh, changed my mood and uh, it affects me mental, mentally. I said, this is not right. It should mm. be like this. I shouldn't care about it, you know? Right. So, no, I, I, I don't even <laughs> look at that kind of stuff. But but you know uh, it, you, you, you once you post a post you also get some people who would criticize your post or send you a negative um, message and um, they're trying to you know 
they're trying to bring you down. How 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 would you uh, handle such such comments or such criticism, negativity? I don't even care at the moment. At the moment, I don't care. But uh, I remember when I was, uh, let's say, when I was in my prime and I was in my top shape and I had the most uh, likes and popularity. I didn't care again. Maybe, hmm. uh, yeah, I didn't care. And but after that, when I got injured, I I couldn't look at these comments because I was uh, feeling so bad mentally. And when I look at these comments, they 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 would hurt me. You know. Yeah. So 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 they get to you. Yeah, but no, that nothing gets me. I don't I don't even look at this. You know, I just post something and I don't look at the comments. Uh, I think everyone has the the right to express their their opinions. Yeah. They have right of not like me because sometimes even I don't like myself, you know. But this is who I am. But everyone has the right to to explain their opinion about me. So I have nothing against that. I don't I don't take that personal. I don't even know these people, you know. And and um, um what, once you go and train in your gym, I mean I mean the gym that you're in, Bul Bulgaria. Um, do you, do you face people coming up with to you taking pictures while you're working out? Um, you know, you trying to get in the gym, do your thing, mentally, uh, have the mind muscle connection. Um, do you get disturbed by people? No, it's very rare because I go to the same gym I was going like 15 years ago. It's right. a small local neighborhood gym that everyone knows me, so nobody comes to me. You know. So because they know me for so long, I don't have this problem. That's why I'm still going to this gym. How, how, how many hours do you work out? Like an hour and a half. An hour and a half. That that would that would that include cardio with it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, would you, would you do your cardio bef uh, pre workout or after workout? I always do it after workout. You know, how, when glycogen like, stores are depleted. Mm. Yeah. How many minutes? I do it very in intense, like 12 minutes of running. Right. Yeah. So 12 Max. minutes, 12 Max. minutes of, yeah, that, yeah that's, that, that, that is intense. 12 minutes of running. That's um pretty, very intense. And what do you think about the Stairmaster as a cardio? I never tried it. <laughs> you really? I never tried it, but <laughs> it's very good for the glutes. Yes. You know? Yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. But, but when. But the cardio that you're doing is serious. The the the, the 11 minutes of uh, is is, is it a sprint? Is it a sprint? That's that's serious. It's all more. You know the the thing is that I'm doing a thing that is called uh, Cooper's test. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, this test uh, test your VO max. It's kind. It's it's very old, like from the 60s. But this is how they tested the Marines. Right. Uh, for their shape, their shape. So I do it almost every time after workout and I'm trying to improve. It's like the test is how much can you run for 12 minutes? Anyway. You know, so, and uh, there, there is a stat, stats that you can check at your age. If you run that kind of distance in 12 minutes, you are in this room. Um, you're that good. You know, let's say it's uh, in the middle. Uh, you are very good, you know. Interesting, interesting. And, and... I'm trying to improve every time, but trust me, it's very, it's very intense because every time you are running on your maximum, you know, right? Like, like two or three minutes that you are almost dying. <laughs> you are gonna drop on the treadmill. And and Lazar, do you do you personal train? Do you personal train? Do you do diet yes, and, do and 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 coaching? Yeah, only online. I do personal training. I have a platform. Mm -hmm. I do personal training. But this, I ask. Okay, um, Lazar, I'm gonna stop this and send you a new session very quick. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, Lazar, we're back again on the house of the show, Diesel, and I wanted to ask you. So, do you coach? Do you personal train? Do you do diet and nutrition plan? Yes, but but I still, uh, do it just online. I have a online app where I'm coaching people. So in the past I was doing face-to-face, -face, but now I just do it online. 
Okay, let's speak about the face-to-face -face back then. What do you think about those people who want to come up and they want to look good overnight? <laughs> they want to look good like within a month or two. Like I think, I think they have a wrong perception mm. about how things work. And um, maybe, let, let's say kids, they want it really fast. Let's say teenagers. Uh, and they are very impatient. They want to take uh, steroids immediately and look like some guy they saw online, which is very, very bad. Right. So I think people just, so, some people just want something, but they are not uh, ready to pay the price. So um, I was always telling them what is the process, what they need to sacrifice in order to look like uh, the way they want. So this is the first thing you need to tell them, I think. So they will be prepared. And um, let's say if you get someone who is overweight and want to lose weight, what would you advise him? Uh, my first advice would be to stay patient and to... Well, to have discipline, follow diet. Because this is the most important thing if you are overweight. The diet is the most important thing. And, then, um, and also the patients. That's it. Right. And um, would you would you believe like when you walk in the gym and you see someone who's overweight, he's burning himself, doing cardio one hour, two hours, and they still not see any results? I mean... Um, they would come up and sp speak with you. You know, I'm sure they would come up and speak with you and tell you, look, Lazar, I mean, I'm doing, I'm doing hours and hours of cardio and I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I mean, I'm sure you face such people in the gym, right? Yeah. I think again, the diet is the, the thing that they are missing. And, uh, a lot of people, um, have wrong perception that they don't count like uh, drinks. They, they, they don't look at drinks as uh, calories. Mm. So let's say put sugar in their coffee or tea. They don't count this as calories. But trust me, that's a lot of cal calories you are putting in. And uh, you should be very precise. If you're overweight, you should be very precise with your with what you are consuming. So the first thing that you need to do is just follow the diet. If, if you follow everything that the, the way it should be and you're still not losing weight, yeah. then you have a probably problem with your hormones and you need to go and check with the doctor. I see. I see. And um, speaking about steroids, I mean, what's your thoughts about it? Uh, at, at this point... I was never against it, like because it's your body and you decide what to put inside. Okay. But um, I'm not uh, okay with it. With when people which are not educated take them and use them, you need to be very um, educated in order to know what can happen when you when you take steroids, and then the choice is yours. But there are certain people that um, promote steroids to youngsters. I'm not. I'm not okay with that because you know when when I was 17, you know, and I don't know anything, and I just want to be in shape. You don't. You don't know what consequences you can experience. With that. Yeah, it's a huge consequences. I mean. Um... Stories, it's like the ocean. I describe it like an ocean, and especially for the youngsters, I mean, they just want to look good now and then, and they don't know what they're getting themselves into. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean. So it's a it's it's an ocean. I I, I describe I describe. You know. uh, I describe it as an ocean. 
Yeah, but you know what's the problem sometimes that uh, teenagers are inspired by guys which are around twenty five. You know what I'm saying, right? Let's say when I was when I was in my prime, I was twenty seven, twenty eight. So a lot of uh, I was inspiring a lot of teenagers. Yeah. Okay, but I back then I didn't know the consequences of of things. Yeah. For that age, you're still not mature enough. You know what I'm saying? I know what you mean. And so when you are forty, you are mature enough. But teenagers don't relate to you. They relate to the twenty-five year old guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yes, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah, so, I, so, it's, there's a big uh, gap between who they should listen. And um, I'm going to speak about lifestyle right now, um, Lazar. Let's get deep into the conversation of lifestyle and time management between work and staying fit and facing life overall like you know life can hit you you know what i mean it can hit you from all angles and uh psychologically and mentally how do you say focus when you get obstacles from life you know when i'm speaking obstacles i mean i'm sure what you know what i mean you know it could be Let's say cash flow. It could be um, uh, having a problem for uh, opening a license. Um, yeah. Obstacles. H how do you face those obstacles uh, at, at such age? I'm, 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 I'm pretty interested to see how you would actually, um, let's say, open your open your hands and say hello negativity. You know, I'm here. How do you handle it? Yeah. You know what what I realized is not is that it's not about what happens in your life. It's mm. about how you you react to it, you know? Right. Let's say uh, what happens to me uh, let, let's say the same thing happened to me and it happens to you. It could destroy let's say me, but to you it, it could be nothing. So it's about how you react to it. So when um, challenges happen in life, I just accept them as a part of life, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's just, it's just part of life. This, this is what I'm saying. If shit happens, I just say, oh, it's part of life, and I just continue. If I can do something about it, I do it. If I can't do something about it, so it's not up to me. Mm. I shouldn't be worried about it. Mm. But if, if I can do something about it, I just sit, think about it, Decide what to do, and I do it. And again, I'm not worried. Sure. So, so it's, it's about yeah, it's just about uh, how you react to things. I never, uh, in the past, I was very stressed about everything, but then I realized that. Uh, what what age was that? What age was that when you were very stressed about it? Uh, I think from. I think from twenty seven eight. Yeah. Oh. Below 35, I was very stressed about everything, you know. And I, when you are stressed about something, then even small things uh, can make you, um, you know, even more stress. Yeah. You no, know? so you are stressed all the time, and this is how, um, this this is how you become sick. This is it affects everything, mm. you know. Yeah. So now I don't let. Things like this uh, get into get inside. And just I I just accept them as a part of life. And 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 you know, um, when did you decide to actually say right? I'm gonna start opening my own brand, my own business, and I'm gonna switch my myself from an athlete to an entrepreneur, right? I'm going to start opening. I'm going to start having my own brand. I'm not going to have a brand, you know, um, sponsor me or do like now. Now, my, like we say in Kuwait and, and Arabic, mashallah, you know, mashallah, you've got your own brand. You've got your own gyms. When did you set your mindset to say, right, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have those goals and I'm going to approach them and I'm going to make them happen. So oh, I, I realize that, you know, when I'm, when you are on the top of your game, everyone wants to give you money to, to promote their things, right? Absolutely. And once you are not on the top of your game, they will stop paying you. Yeah. So, so I need to create something that doesn't involve me being so popular, you know? Yeah. I need to create something that can stay in time. And this is the only way, you know, maybe nobody knows my name after five years. Okay. There are a lot of influencers that, that can promote my brand, right? Right. You can use this. Yeah. So, uh, maybe I was, I was all, always open for that kind of thing. I was just uh, waiting for the right opportunities to come. And did you ever hit rock bottom where you didn't have any cash on you? Uh, I can say I'm very, <laughs> very cautious with that kind of stuff. Right. But maybe when I was younger, I didn't have uh, any money in me when I was younger, mm. maybe 18, but I didn't care at all. At that point, you know, I was, I didn't care about it. And, and, and how did you turn this over? Uh, you know, when I was, uh, when I was younger, I was, uh, doing sports. So I was never considering money as something important to me. The most important thing was to be good at certain sport. But when I grew up, when I grew up and I, you know what, I started working out I, I, and I went to, to work as a bouncer in a club yeah. and I saw that certain people are treated differently than others. People right. that have more money in the clubs, they treat them differently. So this is when I decided that, oh, so money are important, right? Right. And when I switch and I decided that I will, I will focus more on making money. But at the moment, I'm at the point that I realized that it doesn't matter at, at certain point, once, uh, you have your everyday needs, money are very important, you know, mm. but after that, I don't think that they are so important. I don't, I, I don't want to be so rich. I don't want to have a private jet and, uh, five cars. I don't want that. Mm. Yeah, I, I know that this will make me happy. I can understand that's, that's, you know what we call this, um, this is, this, this is the mindset of being rich. Mm. This is to call this, this is the mindset of being rich. When you're satisfied, you've, you, 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 you are rich. You know what I mean? Mm. But, um, yet still, um, how many mistakes did you do in life that you've actually remember them and do you regret them? Oh, I, I, I always say that I don't regret anything in life because uh, I accept all my mistakes as a lessons. Mm. So I don't regret anything. This, uh, all these mistakes make me who I am today. They made me grow as a person. So I don't regret anything in life. Beautiful. That's, that's, that's absolutely beautiful. Did you have any message or any advice to whoever is watching us right now? Any surprise that you want to surprise them about Lazar, you know? I'm not a great <laughs> <laughs> A surprise uh, for the watchers, for the viewers, something, something they never knew about you, you know, or, 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 or certain advice you want to give them. To all the Arabic people, I can say, mashallah, shabab. <laughs> you know, right. Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's why I, I remember you before. The, right, you were, right, yeah. right, right. When you were the host of the show. Oh yes. Every, every word was Shabab, Shabab. And so I ask you, what is Shabab? <laughs> it, 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 means, it means the fellas. Yes, the guys, the fellas, the fellas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, any advice for, for, for the viewers, um, Lazar? Do you have any advice for them? Uh, uh, just stay on the ground and, uh, just follow your dreams. And 
I think if you if you love something, just do it, and thing will happen. That's the simple message. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I mean, I mean, I mean, Lazar. You know what? It's 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 amazing to have you with us as a guest here, and um, um, you've got you've got a huge fan base here in the Arab country. Um, they voted for you to be a guest on 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 the show. I mean, you've I mean, I mean, you've been there for such a long time, and you've inspired and you motivated many of the many. You know what I mean. And um, we, I mean, I wish you good luck with the with the supplement brand. They look very nice, very neat, and um, with the gym. I mean, I'm 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 hoping to come and work out at, at your gym in Egypt one day, Lazar. You know? Oh yeah, definitely. If you come to Egypt for sure, we need to work out. Oh, we're gonna get a workout down there, and and hopefully maybe um, I'm doing a new project. I'll probably have you down here in Kuwait. And it'll be, it'll be it'll be it'll be a pleasure to have you here on the house with Shredded Diesel with Lazar Angelov from Bulgaria. A lot of love from from Kuwait to Bulgaria. Any shout outs, Lazar? Any shout outs you want to give out on the show? I give a shout out to Z Shredded Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you. And that's it, uh, guys. So. It was pleasure for me to uh, to speak with you. I haven't seen you. Pleasure is mine. Yeah. yeah. It has been a long time. Yeah, yeah. I think you're very good at this. You are always a good speaker. So you will have success at it. Thank you very much, Lazar. And I'm sure I wish I, I'm not I'm I wish you all the best and um the very successful life in front of you i'm sure I'm, sh I'm sure we've all learned at this age of the 40s we've learned from the past and um it's nice to implement it at this age um good luck with the gym good luck with with your product lines uh, and just before i wrap anything up any future goals you have aside from the from the from the brand the gym oh it's uh i, I just want to make family now i'm I just, I, I am ready for the <laughs> part of my life. You know? Oh my God. A family. Good luck, Lazar. Good luck. Good luck. The family is beautiful. I tell you this. Family is beautiful. So your your goal is absolutely beautiful. I wish you good luck with this. And um, hopefully, hopefully you, you build a very nice um, family. And um, God bless. God bless. May God bless you all over there. From Kuwait to Bulgaria. Lazar Angelov on the house with Shredded Diesel. Best of luck, Lazar. Best of luck. Thank you. Have a good day. Ma salama. Bye. Bye. Alak. But but but. Chow fi al qali. Chow shere ya al qali. The dawn. The resmi. Hat trick. Bil Kuwait. The qatar. Melab kura. It's ajla. Move it chidi. Get so fi bintat. See you by ten years loan. I'm about to get the phone. Allah wahi. Ada Instagram him. Dayfuhum. He goes like. Birthday Academy events stores camps walak شفاهم فيكم والله تعبت وانا بين فيك أفضل ملعب كرة بالكويت.